name is Grace Wanyura and this is Horse Pro, the channel dedicated to empowering the amateur horse enthusiast and supporting the budding young professional. Today I have the honor of interviewing Brady Mitchell of Brady Mitchell LLC at Further Lane Farm here in Wellington. Brady in the summer season is situated in North Salem, New York, originally hails from Canada and is now fully operational in the United States. Brady, I'd like to thank you for speaking with us today. Thank you. And, Pleasure. and I know everyone's looking forward to some candid responses from a young professional who has come up through the ranks and is now in top league, obviously in beautiful Wellington, and someone who has worked their way to this uh, honestly and through hard work and effort. So, but we're going to start with a few casual questions because sure. I know that there are some young folk out there who are going to wonder a few basic things to start with. So, when did you really realize that you wanted to be a professional, that riding was the career for you? Um, from my very first thoughts I can remember, that is when I knew that I wanted to be in, 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 the, in the horse game in some way. Uh, I grew, when I, my first thoughts of horses are when I was very, very young and there were ponies in my backyard and I was obsessed by them and I've known my entire life that this is what I wanted to do. Right from the very beginning. And how old were you when you started riding? I was five and a half, oh my gosh. despite <laughs> the, the local riding school not wanting to take me until I was six years old. But when I tell you, I threw a fit daily and cried daily until somebody would say yes, and my mother begged and pleaded with Tanglewood Stables in Oxbridge, Ontario, and they, they agreed to take me when I was five and a half and never stopped. So your persistence paid off, it is sure what did. you're saying. Yeah. And having come from uh, Canada and from uh, uh, an average middle class family yeah. and now having obviously the abundance and the opulence of Wellington at your yeah. fingertips, yeah. what advice would you give to somebody who is in your position if they were at, at, at that age? I, I mean, how, say, do you, or how do you earn this? How do you get this? Uh, nothing replaces hard work. Hours of hard work that you watch me as a kid. I mean, Everything from mucking stalls, grooming horses, anything, doing hay, and any anything that you can do within this to, to move yourself along. And I would say that the most important thing to me was to have a very broad skill set because I, I think a lot of people think that, that in order to, to be able to, let's say, have what I have on the go now, that all you need to do is ride well, and that is not the case. Riding well is one little tiny part of this. Uh, and I think that you need to do everything you can to have a really broad skill set. You need to learn from every blacksmith you can talk to, every vet you can talk to, every rider, every trainer. Uh, learn something new from every horse that you interact with. They're the best teachers. I think that that is the most important thing, to have a broad skill set uh, and to learn from as many top people as you can. And if you were uh, to choose, I mean, we're talking about you are a coach, a trainer, a rider, obviously horse management, yeah. um, that includes horse psychology, trying to figure yeah. them out, a yeah. salesman. Yeah. Out of all those hats, what's your favorite thing to do? That's what you, ah, I knew it. <laughs> and is competition still high up there I for you? I am as competitive now as I was when I was first met you when I was 12 or 13, yeah. which you know yes. how competitive I was. <laughs> uh, that part has never changed. I love competition. Uh, I love riding, uh, but I don't only just love riding in competition. I have to say, uh, taking my time and training a young horse, I find equally as, as uh, rewarding, uh, sometimes more so, to be honest. Uh, but riding would be my favorite part. And what do you consider to date your greatest riding achievement? My greatest riding achievement to date is absolutely being a uh, tier two champion and third overall at uh, the USHA International Hunter Derby Finals with my great horse, Casanto. That was a night I will never, ever forget as long as I live. And that remains my, my most favorite horse, who's most near and dear to my heart. And uh, that, that was a really special night. Nothing better than landing from the last jump and then hearing 92s and yeah. I, it, it's just in an environment like that I'll never forget it I'll never forget it that has to be an exciting thing it's true right I mean yeah. how can you replace that kind of a high that was yeah I mean my back shiver and I guess you look forward to it. doing it again yeah yeah I mean I want to win overall you know being third overall was great and being tier two champion but that is my my biggest goal would be to win 100 derby finals 
Yeah. But you know what? I think that's amazing. And of course, the one thing we can't forget is you've also done the jumpers. Lots, yep. And you've also worked in Europe. Yeah. And now when you were in Europe, how do you think that has given you an edge to come back here? What 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 developed well, what did you develop what skills did you develop there that you really, wouldn't have had here? I was really lucky to work for some really top people when I was there and I was able to learn about further my own riding education as well as my education of the business because I worked for John for and Ann Symes for two years while I was there, who undoubtedly at the time were running the largest dealing business to America in Europe, dealing hunters and equitation horses and junior jumpers. Uh, and I would say that, and before that I worked for Jessica Curtin at a time when she was number one rider in the world. So I had a really cool opportunity to, to further my riding education and then also really further my, my education on how to pick a horse, what, what trainer is going to like which horse for which job, uh, different levels of quality and what those are worth and, and how to spot that. And so I would say that those, those were two very, very important jobs in my life that I took a lot away from that have kept me winning and having a successful business. So. And and would you say that um, you've kept uh, excellent terms from Europe to here? Uh, yeah. you, I know you were telling us that you develop young horses in Europe and then bring them over yeah. um, so that they're ready to go yeah. here. Now, when they're in Europe, do you have them prepared already in mind for the North American market? Yeah, certainly. And that's part of the reason that I've chosen the place that they go to. Uh, this top, top rider, uh, he and his Polish and his wife, Johanna. Crusoe in Germany, and they uh, are top horsemen, and he's a top rider, and he's patient and thoughtful with the horses, and they, they, he understands hunters, which is really helpful to me, so even though they're not showing as hunters, that's always the direction they're going. He rides light, he rides soft, they try to get them at the right weight for me, they, they understand a little bit what the goal is, um, so that, that's been hugely beneficial to me. And if you had to choose uh, a couple of mentors in your life who have given you a, 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 a leg up in this, pardon the pun, but if you had to choose a couple of mentors who really kind of set you on the path to the man you are today, the writer you are today, the businessman, the successful businessman you are today, who would have one of those people? I am sitting right next to her. Oh my God. <laughs> She's going to make me cry. Oh. Yeah. Undoubtedly, the, the biggest mentor in my life is was you. As uh, not only as a as a rider and a and a trainer, which I was thinking today actually before we did this, I'll never ever forget when I was having one of your lovely difficult flat lessons that you said to me uh, when you said to me that there are many many good riders and there are very few good horse trainers. Uh, and also knowing my financial background, you said you better get good at that. <laughs> so the, uh, <laughs> and you have, and you have some yeah. goal achieved. Yeah. Um, so uh, very much, uh, you know, as I said, uh, it, middle class is a stretch. I mean, we really didn't have a lot of means to do any of this, and I was lucky enough to grow up under three minutes away from Grace's stable, uh, where you really gave me a leg up and took me to shows, and I gave me the opportunity to ride literally every type of horse. Your sales business really taught me about every level of this because I, one day I was riding a quarter horse teaching it how to jump for quarter horse shows. The next day, Eric Mamaz would be sending a horse in, we'd be jumping the top of the standards, I mean, and everything in between. So that was part of, part of, you know, well, I learned a ton there. And also as a human, as a human being, Grace was the only disciplinarian I've ever had in my life, which I'm extremely thankful for now. Uh, you know, because I, I didn't have a lot of that in my life and, uh, you know, that's that's where the beginning of my attitude towards this started, which is no excuses and uh, and working hard at this and also having a good vocabulary and you know, many things. I remember yeah. that. But I will say, you know what, from a trainer's perspective, I will say, and I use this example a lot, I use you as an ideal when kids say to me, oh, I don't want to ride that horse, or, you know, what value is there in riding that horse? And I tell them all the time, the first summer you came to me, that I said, hmm, 
I'm going to see whether that kid wants to ride. And I must have yeah. given you every horse that I hate to say it, no one else wanted right. to ride. Yeah. And you made every single horse better and took it as a mission over the summer to make every single horse a better horse. And I have yeah. to tell you, I knew then that you'd be a super success. Yeah. Because yeah. that is, but in anything, I think had you chosen to do anything, you would have Thank been you. successful. Um, and having said that, what are you doing here? I mean, I know you work obscene hours. Obscene but hours. But what do you do outside of horses? Like, what do you uh, like to do outside I of horses? I try to do as little as possible outside <laughs> of horses because this is what I love. That's I right. love every second of it. I love every part of it. I never feel like I've really worked a day in my life because uh, I love every second of this. That's great. And I love, you know, I love buying them. I love selling them. I love teaching people. I, I really enjoy the whole thing. Um, and obviously, I do. We do have some time outside of this, and Adam and I like to uh, go boating. That's, That's actually great. Adam, my partner, is really passionate about boating, so I've become interested in that. And you know, we take the occasional vacation, but mostly this is what I want to do. And yeah. what do you what do you want to do in the next ten years? Ten years from now, we're going to sit down again, and we're going to do this interview again. And where are you? What what will you have accomplished in ten more years? Um, well, I'd like to have won the Winter Derby Finals Excellent. at least one time. At least one years. time. Let's make it a goal. How I about would, three? Let's yeah. have a three-peat. I would like to also uh, have won the night class here, which I've come close a couple of times. I'd like to win that at least one time in the next 10 years. Uh, and I would just like to have more of the same as what I have right now. I, uh, you know, I would like to have lots of fancy horses in my life, lots of young horses, lots of uh, and nice customers to teach. I, I really am in a really good place in my life and I would like it to continue and grow the same way it is right now. I think that's excellent yeah. and I wish you the best. Thank you. So for everybody out there, for anyone who thinks they can't do it, you can. It takes hard work, dedication. Brady Mitchell is an example of someone who has come from the grassroots level all the way to the top tier, able to run a very successful business in Wellington, win in any company, run a successful uh, training uh, and coaching facility as well. So anyone out there, you need to take note, watch the video more than once. If you want to be inspired by Brady, I will leave a link in the description below so that you can contact him if you would like to become a client, learn more coaching techniques or tips from him. Please, everyone, Brady Mitchell, LLC from Wellington, Florida. This is Horse Pro.